Ian, well, you've just released the news, the, the really disappointing news that Richard Brindley's been ruled out for, for six weeks. I mean, a, a, an obvious one. How much of a, a blow is that for you? Massive, really. Um, I think one of our most consistent players throughout the season. Um, no matter the, the system or the shape that we've played, he kind of slots in in a different roles. And it's been key in, in how we build up play and bring the ball out of defence. So, yeah, disappointing one. And he was obviously working hard to come back from a small Achilles problem, had a couple of games rest and we were freshening him up. And then, of course, a little ironic that it's then his arm that's injured. So just really bad luck, um, real bad luck. And we've we've had a little bit of that with some of the defenders the past uh, past couple of weeks. But um, But, you know, we're just working now to keep the others fit. Um, working to try and get Carl Cameron back and um, and we'll just have to manage with it. Got a lot of adversity at the moment, haven't you? You hit a patch of illness last week when you wanted the game to get called off. I, I guess you're still recovering from that and some injuries now. Are you finding it tough as a group? Um, it, it was tough probably start of last week. I'd say Monday just before the Stockport game. You know, We were a bit of disarray really because there were so many players missing and hardly any out on the training pitch and a big question mark over the game and things like that so that was a it was a tough day those couple of days but we came back in on Wednesday and we were a bit down about the game but a few players started to to feel a little bit better and by Friday I think the introduction of Harry Arter plus a lot of players coming back and feeling a bit healthier and there was a bit more of a lift. I think we all felt really good on Friday after the training session, and I think that showed in our performance on Saturday. So, yeah, it's been uh, hasn't been an easy couple of weeks really in and around the club with so many dropping down. But um, it feels like everybody's on their way back now, and and hopefully we've put that behind us, and we can just look forwards now to to some really good games. I guess in, I mean we see the games, and, and you, we see you short in the games, which is one thing, but. It must just be as bad on the, and I know you're past it now, but looking back, it must be just as bad on the, the training field as well because it, it, it must have created havoc to your preparations. Yeah, I mean, obviously we had six or seven missing on Monday from the session that, and then what you plan in your head to deliver suddenly on Monday morning is, is out the window and you have to adapt a little bit. But I think you have to try to, to stay positive and look at what you can do. OK, we have a small group, but... Let's not make excuses. Let's get out there and, and do the best we can with, with what we've got. And sometimes when when you're up against it, and we felt up against it a little bit around the Stockport game, and I think it pulled us all tighter together. And then I thought the, the last kind of 20 minutes was backs against the wall against Dagenham. But, you know, the players were united in that. And I think that shows a, a good team spirit. Yes, have you seen something from your team, especially on, on Saturday? I'm sure you knew it was there, but you know Saturday's result in the face of adversity must be one that you're all very proud of. Yeah, I think you know we've had a few little periods of results that haven't quite gone our way. Earlier in the season, we lost three in a row, and I don't know if you remember, at that point we brought Kieran Brennan in on loan and we'd lost Lacey and Cam. And it was like we lost Lacey, Cam and Connell all in the same week, uh, all to, to certainly Connell and Lacey to very innocuous kind of kicks or um, and we just felt wow out of nowhere suddenly we've lost the entire defensive unit um, and we lost three games we're up against it and then we bounced back and, and went on a really good run I think we've had a little bit a similar kind of squad's been frayed a little bit all in the same area and um, and we felt up against it but yeah I thought they really displayed great character on um, on Saturday you mentioned Harry Arter in a previous answer. I just wonder how much of an impact you think he had with his experience. Helped a lot. Um, you could see him talking before the game, talking through the game, you know, especially little moments where set plays were being set up and um, decision making just to when to calm the game down. You know, he's obviously not played lots of football, so we knew that maybe we'd get an hour out of him if we wanted to to save him and prepare him for Tuesday. Uh, we had to be sensible with that. But I thought for that hour he contributed enormously. So just good to have somebody with that level of experience coming in at this stage of the season and puts a real calm head into the group. And I guess a massive help for the younger players. You kind of touched on it there, but especially with you having to rely on a, a much wider part of your squad, I, I guess he helped on and off the field. Yeah, I think it's always when you bring in a player that's played where he's played at, um, up in the Premier League is where maybe some of our young lads would aspire to be 
and then then you can take a lot and learn a lot from a person like that so yeah it's um been a real big bonus to to have him in and and you know of course for him he wants to contribute the most on the pitch which i think he's going to do but certainly off the pitch we'll we'll get a lot as well just to touch on Connor Rawlinson because we, we spoke with him earlier and, and he passed 100 appearances for Notts County last week, I think, against Stockport. How much of a key has he been for you since you've been manager here? I think when I first came in, you know, Connor was a, a big part of, um, you know, we had we, we made some changes to the way that we wanted to play and, and tried to move things in a slightly different direction. And I think Connor was a, somebody that really supported that Um understood where we wanted to go and wanted to be a part of it and was a driving force in the group and that's an important person that you have around there you know somebody with a bit of leadership and cares greatly about the football club you can see that he cares a lot about the the club and the success so um great for him to to reach that milestone and hopefully a few more uh, a few more he'll get, he'll get after that and you think that you say about the, the care in his first season, he won um, fans player of the year. I think that was before obviously you were here, yeah. uh, and also jointly won players player. But that kind of typifies, you know, you don't win those just for the sake of it. The reasons you gave that he's successful in Notts County is why he wins those awards, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think he. Um, I think he. It was a game for him on, on, um, on Saturday against Dagenham. You know that last. 20, 25 minutes when we had to defend a lot of crosses, a lot of balls into the box and we were down to just one natural central defender and he took the lead in there and he won every header and brave defending and I think that's uh, what he's all about and of course fans love that as well so um, you know, especially in a game like that he gets to, to demonstrate what he's all about. And I think, again, looking back and doing some research, when you first joined the club you talked about wanting more goals from players in defence. Do you still maybe want to push him for a bit more from there, is that one area perhaps that could improve? It's definitely about time he got his head on a on a cross. Um, <laughs> although he's got one, he got one the other uh, he got one the other day against uh, Wrexham, and that was a yeah. great goal, a great goal. Um, but it, but I expect Connell to be there on set pieces. I didn't think he'd be there in open play, um, so it took me a little bit by surprise when my left of a back three is delivered to the middle of a back three in open play. Um, but no, it, it, yeah, it's it's about time he contribute with a goal from a corner. So I, I can put that on him now. He needs to he needs to to get a couple more for us. Well, let's say it's, it's going to happen Tuesday then against huh. against Boreham Wood. So yeah. there you go, we've caught it. Uh, but what about Boreham Wood? They're they're really in the same sort of position as you in the table, just uh, one place above. Uh, what what are their biggest threats to you on Tuesday night? Um, I mean, they've they've had a great season, and I think that's credit to Luke Garrard. I think he's just done a outstanding job uh, really well run uh, club and they've had a great se- I mean obviously the FA Cup run aside but even in the league one thing I'll say about them is probably the best defensive team in the league I know they've conceded one uh, they've conceded a few against Wrexham the other day but in general I would say one of the hardest teams to break down that we've played against um, brilliantly organised and when they they play forwards quick and play with a real uh, energy within the team and I think that's something that Luke instills in them um, very very well organised team difficult one to play against um, it was a good game when we went down there I thought we were certainly the better team in the first half but they came out second half and caused us a lot of problems and in the end it was kind of end to end could have gone either way so um, now a team that is of course uh, having a good season so will come full of confidence um, but like you say, we're, we're very close in the league, so I expect a really tough game. How much of this is a pivotal week for you with Chesterfield to come on on Saturday? Two big home games against teams up and around in the National League. Yeah, I mean, we knew that this would be a, a tough month of fixtures. We needed to come through it and be be in the playoffs and in and around where we want to be, um, touching distance from where we hope to achieve. And then we know that a lot of the clubs in and around us have got to play each other in the run-in. And, and um, I think after we've played these, I'm not sure if we've got to play anybody else in the top 10. I don't think so. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I don't say that we've got a, a favourable run-in because every, team is a, it's a, every game is a difficult game. We've seen that throughout the season. Um, but certainly if we can have a, a good week this week, I think it puts us in good stead for, um, for the run-in. 
And just looking at the fixtures, I think only in the first week of April do you have a bit of a, a spare midweek. Mm. How, how much is it you're going to be able to, you know, how crucial are you already thinking about ahead to manage your squad for that run in? Yeah, we know that there's going to be um, a bit of a congestion of a few games together. So, But we've had that and I do think that that's been a strength of ours that when we've had to a lot of games normally in, in quick succession and, and both us and the opponents have to rotate, generally I feel like we're strong there because I think we have a good squad. Um, players have come in and they've proven themselves. We had it a lot in the FA Trophy game when we rotated. So um, as long as we can keep everybody fit, I think we're in a a good place to rotate and, and when the games come thick and fast we can keep players fresh.